Good morning, everyone. I woke up to another glorious day. The sun was just beginning to cast its warm, golden rays over the horizon. As I stepped into my garden, it was like walking into an enchanting painting. The delicate dew clung to the leaves and the petals, glistening in the sunlight. My roses were in full bloom. Their intoxicating fragrance wafting through the air. It was a symphony of colors, scents, and sounds. A perfect morning in the embrace of nature. I settled down to enjoy my tiramisu, basking in this serene beauty. Just as I was relishing the sweet, creamy layers of my tiramisu, the melody of the garden was interrupted by a sudden, startling crash. And there it was, my precious kalamkoi, tragically broken. Faced with the task of reporting that, I saw an opportunity to do more than just simply transferring it to a new pot. This was a chance to prune and rejuvenate the entire plant. So, I began by trimming the flowers. You might be wondering why. Well, flowers consume a large amount of nutrients, and right now. My kalamkoi needs those nutrients for recovery. Next, it's time to address the roots. Kalamkoi, being a succulent, reacts particularly well to this part of the process. Cutting off some of the older roots can stimulate new growth and contribute to a healthier plant overall. It's a bit like hitting the refresh button on the plant's life. Then I set about shaping the plant, trimming away any excess leaves and branches to create the ideal form. These cuttings won't be discarded. Instead, they will be used for propagation. Yes, you heard it right. I will stick those cuttings in the soil, and in due time, they will transform into new plants. Fast forward to two months later, and the magic of nature has taken place. Those cuttings that were once part of the broken calicoe have started a new journey of their own. They have grown roots, strong and ready to support their new lives in their own pots. As I carefully place each cutting into its new home. There is another important step to consider: picking off the top bud. By leaving only two pairs of buds, we allow the plant to grow fuller. But if you have a tall one and prefer a standard shape, you don't need to remove the top bud.
And so, we come to the end of this journey, a tale of breaking and rebuilding, of loss and growth. It's just another day in life of a gardener, and a testament to nature's incredible power of renewal. Thank you for joining me in this gardening adventure. Remember, each setback is a setup for an even greater comeback. <laughs>